you know, I was listening to music and um, I was sitting there thinking, you know, it'd be nice if I could just leave the music on and keep talking so you could have the music in the background, but I have to, like I can leave the Christmas tunes on, I think, because it is um, not copyright, but all of the other music, you know, is copywritten. And there could be somebody who is doing a video who is all about, you know, distracting humans and, um, you know, doing something fun, dancing around a song or something. And, um, you know, the controllers would be like, oh yeah, let it through, let it through. My YouTube videos trying to wake people up and get them to think for themselves. And they're like, hell no, any anything. Did she look to the right too many times? Let's, let's just uh, dock that one. That's a censorship problem right there. That's a, one of the stuff that they uh, will do to take down any of my videos is like, so anyways, you just gotta be so careful. So yeah, I can't just play the songs. Um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about this morning, because I think a lot of people have a hard time being able to understand, like, uh, how, um, you know, how there could be controllers. How could there, how, like, it just sounds too outrageous. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like a conspiracy theory because it sounds so outrageous. But when you start really breaking it down, that's why you go down any rabbit hole and it all leads, you know, follow the money, you end up at the same freaking place every time. And, uh, and it's the relics, uh, friggin' is the um, ancient, uh, it's the families, like they think of themselves as the blue bloods because way back whenever, I mean, you can't go by real time because it's all made up and everything is just realities like there's no I know there's just there's no succession in time like where it goes goes like a domino effect or something there's separate individual realities and I mean if you think about it, it's the only thing that makes sense and the realities that have to do with experiences to the age that they represent in the zodiac and so that age is that experience, but it's those realities are specific to that. And even on earth at the changing of the ages, there's always a cataclysm to move you into the new age. There's always something big that moves, you know, to transition you into the new age. So it's just, I think that the, the fascinating thing about this one is just because we are learning about our own selves, about consciousness, and about who and what we are, so that we can transition with the transition. Like, it's gonna be different because humans, like their experience had to end when that age ended. And then, um, you know, but you get reborn, reborn, reborn. You just go into those experiences, but those ages are particular realities. Like, I, that's how I see it. Like, what is shown to me. That's the only way I can perceive it and say it. Like, everybody has their own perception, their own understanding, their own translation of the inner, of the information that they receive and their abilities to understand what this place is. So, um, and it's, it's like an education center. It's an education center for consciousness. But people get so caught up in the avatar that they forget that they're just here to develop their consciousness. <laughs> Doesn't have to do with your body. It has to do with your soul. <laughs> but people get all caught up in the distraction of life. And then, you know, we see what that has led to with the manipulation of people's minds and spirits and pulling them away from their connection to self. Sometimes when they start doing this itching, I just want to be like, uh, start wagging their tail and it's like okay you're just getting all too focused on stuff that is ridiculous like dogs wag their tails dogs itch you know when you start feeling like oh shut up <laughs> that's how it feels lately i swear to god uh it just feels tense everything feels super tense and super like it's just dragging out like the oh this is the longest living disease that i swear to god um okay so Anyways, um, when you get back to, so if you think about this place as just being for consciousness, but we get so caught up in the avatars experience and that is where you have these controllers who come in, you know, because if you think about this as a school and they hand it over power to the blue bloods, the 
<clears throat> the ancient family all the way back of control, then they, um, I mean, it's like they were handed the, th that's why they became like royalty and stuff because they feel that they were handed the, I picture them in those things that a king holds and for some reason specter or something is coming in my head. I don't know if that's what it's called though, but you know, one of those things that king holds it is like, uh, yeah, it is like a relay where they just hand it off to the next one, hand it off to the next, and they just are in their own little, and they're in control of everything, and they've got all the money and the power, but they do it all through manipulation. But one of the ways, um, anyways, uh, uh, why I was trying to get to this to begin with was that, um, so when you think about businesses, and there was some commercial that came on this morning. Oh, it was for Jay-Z Penny's Christmas commercial. And it just all of a sudden just was like, oh, because they bought, because when I was a kid, there was only a couple stores. It was like Montgomery Ward, Sears, uh, Pennies, and that was fancy. And then I think there started being like Neiman's. I started, um, there started being some fancier stores, you know, for the richer people. But, you know, as common folk had to go to Montgomery Wards and get her clothes. And there were some boutiques. Like, I remember that little store, the 135 store or whatever. Like, I was watching Mean Girls yesterday when they went in that store. That was real. That was a real place. Where everything was just tiny, tiny clothes. And, you know, a lot of the teenagers in school would go there and uh, get clothes. But I was really tall. And, um, and nothing fit me there. And, uh... I always felt kind of bad, like I can't fit in the 135 store. <laughs> it's just so funny that when you see it in the movie, because yeah, when you're a teenager and it's like, oh, this is the cute clothes here. Not the, go go back to Sears, girl. <laughs> I live that. Okay, so anyways, um, so when you think about like, there was these few stores, right? And you had a lot of mom and pop shops, a lot of stuff, you know, you, uh, people made it and you went and got it. Just like what I was talking about before. A lot of people made stuff. It wasn't, everything wasn't made in China. And when people made stuff and it was pretty damn good, they started selling it. It said a little tag made in the USA. And there was a lot of manufacturing that was going on here and everything was made in the USA. And it was all a lot more profitable for uh, obviously American citizens. And, you know, we were a self-sufficient country. You know, we were growing our own food. We had plenty of oil. We had, um, you know, we were making our own stuff. We were all doing good. But that is when the controllers were like, hey, we can profit off of this. You know, and they start the banking system, Western medicine, their, their education system, all of their systems that they started. But um, for stores, what I was seeing all this morning with that, when I saw that commercial was like how they went in as the corporations <clears throat> and they bought some of the stores. And they bought some and mushed them all together, you know, and made it like, uh, you know, Sears became part of, uh, I don't remember all of uh, the breakdowns, like Sears and Kmart were the same then. And it was like stores that kind of melded in together and they did some of that, and then um, they started some of their own. They started changing all the stuff about manufacturing and moving it and saying, oh, well, you know, we can make cheaper stuff. You get your same stuff, it's just cheaper because we can pay people less over there. And so, you know, they started shutting down all of our businesses and manufacturing and started moving all of our stuff over to China. And, um, and then we started getting really cheaply made stuff. Like you'd get stuff and it would just fall apart. Uh, nothing was made proper. And there was like a huge, uh, you know, if you were going with that QA thing, you know, whatever I think that is when they go in and look at uh, how well something's made, there was no comparison. I mean, people took pride when they were making it here. And then when we started getting it from somewhere else, it was all about money. So let's make a hundred thousand of them and sell them, you know, I mean, it all just became cheap. The parts became cheaper, but they constantly were telling us it was necessary, it was necessary. But the whole time they're driving the costs up when they're telling us the costs are gonna go down. So they're driving costs up and telling us it's necessary, it's necessary. And so then they um, took the corporations and started buying 
you know, these different stores and then started running them down and then started opening their own that would bring in all of this manufacturing, like Walmart and stuff. Then they're bringing in all this cheaply made stuff for really cheap prices. And everybody is so poor now because, uh, you know, the, the, they've inflated the prices of everything and they've not raised um, how much people are making. They just keep raising the prices and taking away our own abilities to, to take care of ourselves. And they did it over generations. So there's so many like newer generations that don't even like, they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to sew, like I've talked about before. They don't even know how to freaking sew or take care of themselves. And that was like a staple to how people survived, was being able to take care of themselves. Multi-functioning, <laughs> be able to take care of yourself in the world. But they got it to where people depended on their systems, depended on them. So they have this, this way that they're creating this dependence but at the same time, they're they're finagling the money because it's all the same people. Like you go through any of these these holes, you're gonna come back to the same Thanksgiving table. They're all sitting at the same damn table. So you go through the medical, the university, all of them, the mainstream media, all of them. They're sitting at the same damn table at Thanksgiving. So you go and um, what they did with the corporations is how they moved in, and so they started running um, some of them out of business. And that's where they started really fucking with the stock market and stuff. They figured out how to drive a price up and then drop it and then uh, destroy businesses. And they got caught on that it, um, when, the, on, when I was on Twitter, when they were doing the GameStop. Um, all of that stuff started coming out, the manipulation, what they were doing to the market. And that's when it started coming out what they were doing to silver, how they are repressing the price of silver so that they can drive up the price of a dollar. Like they are just manipulating everything all the time. When silver has value, but their dollar has none, it's a piece of paper. But they tell us that we need to go to work and get it and they make us have licenses and all this stuff. But it's all their creation, it's all their doing. This isn't part of life. You don't have to have a fucking license, a birth certificate. They didn't have birth certificates, you know, just a couple hundred years ago, whatever, in the beginning of this, this age that we've been living, there was not birth certificates in the beginning of it. They, that was a new thing. It was more so they could market us and control us. And then they use the freaking birth certificate. They stamp it with a number and they use this on the market to trade us. So people have value to their number on their birth certificate. That's going to be coming out because, uh, yeah, we're nothing but property. And that's why now, why they're writing it right in their paperwork, you know? They think they're covering their own ass when, you know, Obama is putting in the friggin', uh, you get this thing put into your, into your body and you're no longer considered a human being. You're now property, you're now a, a social, you're an experiment that they own you. And that's what they did too with the military. They, they own them. You know, you can't even go get a tattoo if you're in it, you know, like they, they take ownership and that's what they're trying to do of the human avatar because they think that they are, you know, they've got the specter or whatever it's called. And, um, I wonder if that's what it's called. I don't have time to look it up right now. Uh, so anyways, the, um, so when they were doing this whole thing with the, the economy to get more control and manipulating where we got our stuff, because over there, like what has come out, you know, is all of those places that they said they were saving money. Well, it was really because they were just using slave labor, slave labor to the point where, you know, you couldn't go home. Like it was still to the point, like if you were going to have a baby, you better have it right there and you're not taking care of it. Like they would beat people. They wouldn't let them go to the bathroom. They're freaking working in ramshackle buildings that collapse on them and killing hundreds of people. Like the conditions were unbearable, what they were doing, and then selling us stuff as cheaply as made under this kind of duress. And it used to be too, like, I remember when you could go in and you could get a pair of Levi's and it was so consistent. I mean, you could go in and not try them on. You just went in and got a pair of your size that you knew was your size. Then, it started becoming like made in Indonesia, made in Taiwan, made in Vietnam and all these different places. And you'd have to try them on. I used to take in, like, cause this was back in the day when I wore Levi's and this is back when they were doing this because they've been started doing this when I was young. 
um, when I went to, um, and I would go try on Levi's, you know, I got used to like, you take in 20 pairs because they'd all be different lengths. They'd be different sizes in the legs. They'd be different sizes in the waist. They'd be different uh, lengths in the, um, you know, from your crotch up to your belly button. Those would be different lengths, like nothing matched. And that was the whole point of Levi's was because they had the pattern that was the 505, the 501, you know, 550. And then they started making more patterns. But before it was very basic, just cowboy Levi's. And, um, but the number was to signify, like, so you knew what style you were getting. And then all of a sudden it was like so inconsistent. It was like, pfft. I think that's probably why they had to start all the other numbers because they had them just coming in and it was just all different sizes. You just didn't even know what the hell you were getting anymore. And um, so you could see completely in the deterioration of what was going on with our products. And people were frustrated, but then it just started just becoming so much of a part of life and so much about people just trying to survive. You know, it was just one thing after another kicking our ass. They were always, and that's what they did. That's what they've done is to keep us distracted and keep us under trauma. That's the whole thing about this freaking sickness. Let's just keep everybody under trauma and keep them sick. You know, we'll offer them some medicine and make some money off of them. But that's what they do is just try and keep us sick and keep us traumatized and keep us stressed the fuck out. And, you know, once you can see through the bullshit and see that it's all manipulation, it's all this fake world of illusion that they're creating. But when they did that with the businesses, they were able to, to run it down to where there's only a few and they own them all by running them out, running out the small business, the mom and pop shops. Uh, so that then they have the, the, um, the, the market, what is that word? It is, um, so they have the, um, the, it's the control of the market, but it's the dominance. Like they're, they're the dominant, uh, industrial force that's bringing us our stuff, you know, they're in control of it all in control of who's making it, where they, and they're all making backroom deals, you know, they're all making these deals like, oh yeah, I'll be quiet. Give me $6 billion. I'll be quiet. And that's the kind of shit that these people do. Oh, it's got poison and they're going to eat it and they're all going to get cancer. Well, give me a couple million and I can be quiet about that. <laughs> I'll just move my kids. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is the kind of people who've been running the world. So, uh, you know, and there's a lot of people who, also participate on a lower level to create this kind of disgusting, uh, you know, world that we are surviving in. But, you know, it's all, all of that stuff is part of the illusion. It's all part of the system of growth and um, it's opportunity for uh, expansion and enlightenment for a soul. So it's all for you to learn and grow from really. And, um, you know, the other thing that I keep seeing and, uh, in my head, how I see everything is, you know, the solar system, how people think it's like a system. I think what is a, a body, the body of like, if you want to think of Christ, the Christ of the body of Christ, the solar system is this, uh, it's a divine consciousness, Christ consciousness like is all part of this like if you went up from us all, like we go fractal out, like I've said, out into all these little broken bits. But if you put us all back together, all the fractals went back together, it would be this one giant being that we're all part of. And we all have the ability to go out and be separate and to experience separateness and to even identify self. As a, as a certain separation, like an, its own identity from other identities. So you have the, um, so you have like the solar system and if it's like a human body, see, it's like um, we are, and I know I've talked about this before, it goes to the synapse. Like a synapse is like this energetic, like inside your body, everything 
is like that um, invention where you, you know the ball goes down, the head goes down, hits this, and then that moves that over there, and that moves this over here, and then it goes there, and then this goes down there, and then it makes it go around here and goes. That's how every single thing in our body works, and that is how I think everything in nature works. But I think that as um, you know, those little inside of our body, those little. Uh, those, those little snaps, those little electrical charges. That is what I believe all of our consciousness is. But that's the, mac, the micro, we're the macro, which we are still micro to other macro. So we are only something on a spectrum. We aren't, like people get so stuck on we are the all be all. We are a part of something. So we are like the electrical charges. So we are these little thoughts and, and then we can fire these thoughts and we can create and this can feel like we're experiencing we're going in and experiencing just like a dream you could go in and you could live a dream and it could seem like you lived a week in that dream but it really was only a few minutes it's the same thing as like what we are experiencing here it seems like it's a long time because we're we're going through it we're breaking it down we're going like following a script we're going through moment by moment to really experience what the soul is experiencing. And so uh, we are, to me, I, I see it all as like a big body, like all of these things, people think of them as stars and stuff, but it's all part of what, what makes this body work. And we're all part of the same thing. And all of the people, like who people think are aliens and monsters and all that stuff, uh, creatures and Bigfoot and all these different things. Those are all just beings that are from other places that can go and travel to other realities. But they're from realities in like, yeah, you may look like a monster or whatever to us, but in their environment, that is what is needed to survive. So, you know, like, um, I, I was thinking about this when I was taking a shower this morning and it is, uh, cause my nose was so stopped up and I drink tons and tons of water. And they say, well, that's supposed to thin your snot, you know, like if you get sick, drink a ton of water. It's supposed to thin it out so you can breathe. And um, so I do it all the time. I drink tons of water, but uh, it still is so, so thick. And I was like, man, I swear if I didn't drink water, I would just close up. I just would cease to be able to breathe or move any air. And I would have to become just a mouth breather. And I was thinking about, the you know mouth breathers and I was thinking about aliens and I was thinking about the different things and about us you know not even needing noses and why how some of the aliens you know, they just have those little holes well, if you didn't need your nose to breathe because what else do we use it for for smelling you know just to have a, a smell of something but what if we don't even need that what if that's why they don't have it because they can imagine what it smells like and they can they can feel what it smells like and they can smell it in their head, which makes them smell it. Because how many things do you smell and they're not there? You, you can start thinking you smell something and you'll think you smell it and you can create that smell in your head. So you're smelling it. Like, I don't know. But anyways, it just really made me start thinking about, you know, about nose, and about mouth breathers and about the different kind of beings and why we are the way we are and um because there's there's a lot of humans that breathe in the mouth just <laughs> just uh i don't know i guess i was like <laughs> i'd rather just breathe in my stopped up nose i don't know why it just it seems so i don't know it, it feels so even when you do it, it makes you feel kind of desperate or something. It makes you feel kind of ill. Like, like you can't breathe good. Like I think that would build up more in my head if I was always walking around like, I would feel like, why the fuck am I using my mouth? I don't know. Because I do have to do that all the time. I do have to be like, what am I listening to? What am I doing? What am I doing here? Where am I? Like I have to reorient myself all the time. I think it's part of the brain injury. Because I didn't have to do that, I don't think, before. Now it's been so long, I'm really having it. Before, when I very first got it, I had a hard time struggling. Because it was like I had to let go of somebody who I wasn't ready to let go of. It made me sad. 
and she had all these ideas and dreams and you know she was pretty cool she was a messed up girl but she was pretty cool and uh you know i had to let go of her and it did make me super sad and there was a lot of times i would think about her and then i would be sad like she's gone but now i have a hard time remembering like who, who what i was like like really hard time and so that's why it's also weird when people start talking about it to me like who I was, well, because I don't really remember that person. I've changed a lot. Like I really believe, you know, for anybody who really is struggling with really just wanting a huge change in their life, wanting to really change themselves, knowing that it's you are the change, is time alone, man. Those really, those uh, eat, pray, love things, and the is all about finding yourself really is it's uh really does transform you and i really really strongly <laughs> i know it sounds like oh yeah like we all have that chance we can all just go get a little cabin in the woods and quit working and sit out there but i think we're headed to more of that kind of thing and yesterday i was watching um yeah because I, I was thinking about the mormons too you know that they send their people out like go grow up come back here then after you grow up if you still want to come back like you figure your shit out you know, and that's how they, I said what they used to do with the Indians and stuff, like, you, and Vikings. You had to go out and prove yourself. And I think that is what we're headed more to, is go out and learn about yourself. Then you have something to bring to the table. Don't go around as an empty shell needing people to rescue you. Of course, I was on other people's playlist. I was not developed enough in myself. I didn't like myself enough. I didn't believe in myself enough. You know, I thought I was a problem. I thought I was a... Uh, didn't feel like I belonged. Just it felt like uh, nothing felt right. And but losing everything and then having to reevaluate and see life, you know. And do you really like how many people can you go around like, oh, I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself, and then somebody walks up and you know holds them up with a gun, they go, thank you, it's my time. Or are they you know suddenly like, fuck, I don't want to die. I think a lot of people just get stuck in this idea. Like, ah, this is just sucks. It's too hard. I just want to die. But then when you're faced with it, then it's like, do you really want to? That's what you got to decide. And a lot of people get faced with that. Like, what, what do you really want to do? You, you get handed the worst cards. What are you going to do? You're just going to kill yourself. You're going to sit and whine and cry and go down to the local bar and just sit at the bar stool and whine about your life every day find empty things to try and make you feel better temporarily or you're just gonna find out like, what in me where where's my substance what makes me me who am I what am I all about and that is what I believe the journey is and I believe that's the journey we're all on is finding out who we are when we're not a part of what we think we are which is this fake world and everybody thinks they're a part of it. But what about when you realize that it's all just a fake world? Then who are you? So, anyways, all the things I was thinking about today. I got more to go on my hats. So, um, anyways, have a great day. And, um, you know, just keep an open mind on things. And keep asking yourself the questions. It's the questions that move us forward, you know? If we're just always satisfied with someone giving us the answers, how is there any transformation? That's how it got us in this problem of control and dominance, you know, obedience, compliance, interference. Ugh, a lot of yucky words. So, anyways, um, you know, just stay open minded, think about what's important, and think about yourself, and think about what makes you you. Think about how you can pull yourself out of this controlling world and start identifying yourself because this world is crumbling. I mean, it's a slow fucking crumble. <laughs> I thought it would be a lot more dramatic than this. It's a very slow crumble. It's tedious, definitely tedious. Hopefully there's gonna be a big old thing that's gonna still go down. <laughs> it's hard to keep faith on that, man. Seems like, ah, oh, damn. It's 12.23.
Anyways, the age of Aquarius is before us. Just remember, it is a changing of the ages, and I mean, it's a cosmic event. There's nothing you can do about it. It's happening, and you can spend your time focusing on what scares you and um, thinking it's the end of the world, or you can focus on what it is you want for yourself in the new age, and you know, what do you want your experience to be like when? If the whole world is handed to you, what are you going to do with it? So think about that and have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.